Okay, guys, you're welcome back. Um, this time we are going to be continuing in our series as well. And we are going to be verifying Hooke's law and use that to determine the first constant of an elastic spring. To achieve that, we are going to be using a retard stand, as you can see, meter rule and a spiral spring. And of course, set of masses. The procedure would involve us, first of all, finding the original length of the spiral spring and then inserting sets of masses, finding the extension produced and then plotting a graph of the M in kg against the extension produced in E. And I'm going to take you through how we could be able to use it to verify the Hooke's law. And in the end, we're also going to use it to deduce or calculate the first constant of this elastic spring. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is to measure the original length or the original pointer reading of the spiral spring. And then I will take it up from there. Okay, having me measured the, um, el um, the length the initial pointer reading, the length of the spiral spring is 8 centimeters. That is about 0 0.08 meters. So I'll note that down and then I'll begin to insert my masses. That is 0 0.1 kg masses, one after the other, about six readings. And then I would take adequate precautions in avoiding parallax error in reading my meter rule and of course, make sure that the elastic limit of this spiral spring is not exceeded. So first, I'm going to be hanging in a 100 gram mass. Now, I would ensure that my spring is uh, stable before taking my reading. And to achieve that, I would have to do this experiment in an environment that is drought free, that is, there is no wind effect. So I'm going to record the pointer reading at this particular point and then find the difference from the original pointer reading and record it as the extension produced for 100 gram mass. Okay, so the extension produced is 0 0.18 meters in that 100 gram mass or 0 0.1 kg mass. Now, I'll go ahead and put in or slot in another 100 gram mass um, and also measure the extension produced as well. I'll record them and I'll do that for other five readings and I'll tabulate my reading and I'll show you how it looks like. So, here is the second 100 gram mass hung um, on the spiral spring. I'm going to measure out and find the extension produced and then I'll subtract it from the or remove the original pointer reading and then find the original extension for this particular mass. So here is the 0 0.3 kg mass. I'll do the same and then also record. So this represents the 0 0.1 kg mass and finally I'm going to be putting the last one 0 0.5 kg mass and then I will show you how the table will look like. So this is the last one. It's while conducting this experiment ensure that both the spiral spring and the mass is not leaning on any surface. And then I've measured my extension and I've recorded it. Here is what the table looks like. Okay, so this is the final representation of the experiment. So I have my masses and I have my extension produced recorded with the initial pointer reading on top of the table, as you can see. Now, if I plot a graph of M on the vertical axis against E on the horizontal axis, it is going to give me a straight line graph, which is expected to pass through the origin, confirming the statement of Hooke's law, which states that provided that the elastic limit of an elastic material is not exceeded, the extension produced is directly proportional to the applied force. 
So this is what my graph looks like. In obedience to Hooke's law, you can see that my graph is a straight line graph. So this is a graph of M on the vertical axis, which could also be converted to the load in Newton by multiplying all these my values by 10, and then the extension produced on the horizontal axis. So this is what the graph is. So now the slope of the graph calculated gave me this. So you can see from here that the slope of the graph calculated is 1.05 kg per meters. Or if you want to convert it to Newton per meters, you can also change that to Newton per meters. So theoretically, if I now want to find the force constant of the spring I used, I would deduce that from Hooke's law by making F subject formula and then substituting the value of my slope, which is m over e, and then multiplied by the value of g. That, so it means that the value of my, uh, the force constant of my spring is 10.5 Newton per meters. So with this method, you could be able to find or deduce the force constant of an elastic spring. And of course, it must be in accordance with Hooke's law. I believe that this lesson has been of great help to you. So do well to also subscribe to our channel so that you will always get an alert when a new video drops. We appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you.